Okay, after discussing the objectivity of a test, we will now proceed with another characteristic of a good psychological test we wish to see with our tools. Let me introduce you the validity which refers to the measure of your test that it really measures what it is supposed to measure. Basically, we can divide major types of validity into construct and criterion validity. All right, let us say, for example, that I had been tasked to administer a personality test. I have to browse the test items out of curiosity and found that the items really measure what they supposed to measure based on the criteria provided in the manual. Let us say, for an instance, you will be assigned to create a personality test and your test has a scale or dimension about extraversion. The test items involved with that dimension should look like it measures characteristics of extraversion and not other dimensions such as agreeableness, conscientiousness, openness to experience, or neuroticism, but extraversion only. Another example, an admissions officer was tasked to create a test with a scale or dimension which tries to measure um, problem solving with algebra, okay? So the test in items involved with that dimension should include algebraic problems and not statistical problems or geometrical problems or any other forms of mathematical problems. And then I will share with you the different ways to check if your test is valid that is through construct and criterion validity. First, we will discuss the construct validity. When we say construct validity, it refers to uh, whether a scale or test measures the construct adequately. So this may include convergent, discriminant, nomological, content, and phase validity. For the convergent validity, the test uh, will with the same or similar constructs should be highly correlated now we are curious how can we uh, how can we conduct conversion validity first we can correlate the scores between two assessment tools or tools subdomains that are considered to measure the same construct for example, you will be assigned to conduct a correlation study on your very own personality inventory. So your personality inventory, let us say, it has extraversion subdomain. So the test results using your uh, inventory should be correlated with another test such as MAPA ng loob or NEO PIR. So these two tests have their own extraversion subdomain. And when you correlate these uh, factors between uh, your test and another set of tests, it should correlate. And this uh, will suggest that your uh, test has a good conversion validity. Okay? So, a map and law of extraversion should be correlated with your uh, subdomain extraversion or your uh, subdomain extraversion should correlate with neopi r's okay another one is the discriminant validity when we say discriminant validity it can be observed in a test with the evidence that the construct should theoretically not be related or correlated to each other so this is in contrast with convergent validity. For example, you will be proposing a test about extraversion and based on research or based on the theories, extraversion is theoretically not related with constructs of neuroticism. For example, in other words, discriminant validity helps us to understand various dimensions within your study or your test. Thus, a researcher has to clearly define that extraversion is simply not related 
to other factors. So as you can see right here, for example, we have self-esteem constructs and locus of control constructs. So as you can see, there are constructs that are highly correlated. So SE1, 2, and 3 are highly correlated. And uh, locus of control 1, 2, and 3 are highly correlated with locus of control 1, 2, and 3, so on and so forth. And in contrast, there are not uh, self-esteem constructs are not correlated with locus of control constructs. So that, that's how we uh, get the conversion and discriminant val uh, validity by means of using statistical analysis. Okay? So that's how discriminant and conversion validity works. Okay? So another form of validity is what we call the nomological validity. When we say nomological validity, it refers to the degree of the test to measure a specific construct it is designed to assess as formulated with a nomological network as you can see right here. Now the nomological network tries to identify the key constructs associated with a phenomenon or of interest and associations among those constructs. In this manner, a test developer or researcher must identify theoretically supported relationships from research journals and then later on, we will try to run data analysis to check if the scale has corresponding relationship. As you can see right here, there might be uh, some correlation between constructs, so on and so forth. So let us say, for example, the mapa ng loob's extraversion by Del Pilar. It has, uh, the extraversion has subdomains such as pagkas uh, pagkamasayahin, uh, pagkapalakaibigan, pagkamasigla, and pagkamadaldal, for example. And then you, you want to use these dimensions to measure the extraversion for your respondents, okay? With the use of these dimensions, if the research journals or other literatures and other forms of evidences such as research findings suggest that these constructs are highly correlated, then, therefore, your research findings may also arrive at the conclusion that these constructs are really correlated, okay? And, of course, Del Pilar's construct of extraversion is a good model to define what extraversion means in a Philippine setting, for example. Okay. The next form of validity is the content and phase validity. Now, content validity, uh, from the term itself, the content of the test shows a valid representation of what we are trying to measure. Of course, when we construct a test, we also wish to identify the test items which likely represent our target measure and not of other domain, for example. Let us say, for example, in a human resource setting, you are assigned to construct an assessment tool for an intake interview or for a job interview. And since you are, uh, your company aims to get the best candidates with characteristics such as team player, goal-oriented, adaptability, and organized, for example, all the questions being asked during the interview should deal with these factors. Or a human resource practitioner, for example, may use a personality inventory with the same content. Okay, So they, uh, they wish to measure, to identify if applicants possess the, uh, these characteristics. After gathering the data, for example, a human resource practitioner may come up with a certain decisions based on statistical findings, for example, that based on the interviews and personality tests, that the applicant really shows consistent characteristics that their company is looking for, okay? So that depends on the practice of, practices of organization. Now, content validity is different with face validity because face validity aims to just simply look at the test and check if it appears to measure what it is supposed to measure. 
or the test devel uh, developer may create a survey form and look at the output and tell himself that ah, it looks valid. Now, it has been suggested that base validity is a lowest form of uh, test validity. Also, a test with this kind of characteristic alone can be used by technically uh, untrained observers. So, unlike content validity, uh, which tries to require uh, subject matter experts to check test items and may also conduct a statistical analysis or face validity where face uh, validity did not conduct such activities okay so for example in here uh, with our presentation we have uh, characteristics of extraversion we have regardiousness assertiveness so on and so forth and based on this uh, based on this uh, item we have uh, items for extraversion such as number one is talkative or number six uh, is reserved okay for this one six r is called the uh, reverse scoring okay so we will discuss this in the uh, utility part or in number 11 we have is full of energy so this is the characteristic of uh, extroverted individual okay so we might check these uh, test items if they have the same con if they have the content of what uh, extraversion looks like okay based on face validity as well okay now we are done with discussing the different types of construct validity let us now proceed with criterion validity. Now, criterion validity or criterion-related validity tries to measure uh, how well one measure predicts an outcome for another measure. A test has this type of uh, validity if it is useful for predicting performance or behavior in another situation. So, this may include a predictive and concurrent validity when you say predictive validity from the term itself it tries to predict individual performance so let us say for example you were assigned to create an intelligence test that can predict the test takers chance to pass the psychometrician board examination or a personality test that can predict test takers very satisfactory job performance in the near future or a chance to be an executive officer or uh, owner of a company or a professional in their field of expertise so the researcher may uh, follow up the test takers performance after some time to check if there is a correlation existing between the test scores and career success for example okay for example there are researchers uh, that suggest extraversion and conscientiousness are good predictors of leadership effectiveness so if this hypothesis is true a person who scored high with these uh, factors and then five years from now a researcher has to check what happened and found that they really became executives for example or business owners for instance and then the, and the like then this test may suggest that it has really a good predictive validity another form of criterion validity is concurrent validity when we say concurrent validity uh, it tries to measure how well a new test for example compares to a well-established test okay for example i am assigned to create a personality test based on big five factor theory and i want to correlate my gathered data using my own assessment tool with NeoPyR, which is a established assessment tool or mapa ng loob for an instance or other assessment tools which were previously validated okay so with this practice i am establishing a concurrent validity okay so this concludes our discussion for validity uh, of test we will see you in the next video for a discussion of uh, reliability and utility. Thank you so much.